the Grey Hat Beard podcast. Hello and welcome to show 40 of Grey Hat Beard, the modern workplace podcast where we talk about all things Microsoft 365. I'm the Grey Hat, Grey Hat Beard. My name's Kevin McDonald. I'm a solutions architect at CPS uh, and an office apps and services MVP. Fortunately, we don't have the hat today. Uh, he's he's feeling a little bit overcome with the end of Olympics and just not having anything to watch. So he's uh, taking off tonight. But uh, we do have Gary. Yep. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Gary Trinder. I'm the beard of Grey Hat Beard, and I am a modern work consultant at Microsoft and also a member of the PMP team. No longer. As I say, there there is still (laughs) still one thing to add to that. It's just not the three that it used to be. So uh, there is. Yeah. Uh, and those uh, watching along on YouTube may have been observant and noticed that uh, while we don't have a hat, we do have two guests. So, uh, Mark, do you want to introduce yourself first? Yeah. Hi, I'm Mark Vale. Um, also Office Services and Service, the whatever, MVP. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Organiser of uh, a little little known Microsoft Teams conference called Commsverse and uh, independent uh, UC uh, voice architect in my day job. <laughs> we were just talking before uh, for those who are wondering no commsverse isn't the day job uh mark does actually have a day job to do as well as that uh and randy do you want to introduce yourself yeah so randy chapman i'm a solutions architect at simity um handling everything to do with voice third-party apps and meeting spaces devices basically anything that plugs into talks to or interfaces with teams of any description uh, I'm also core organizer with Mark uh, for this commsverse thing, um, <laughs> office servers and services and whatever service services and services MVP, uh, specializing in Teams as you'd expect, uh, Skype for Business before that, and yeah, podcaster, yeah, blogger, the whole lot. Yeah, it's an interesting thing here, right? It shouldn't be office servers anymore because like, when was the last time you guys deployed a server? No, office apps and services. Oh, it's changed. So, yeah. yeah, I don't think, don't think there's any servers involved with the no. uh, the MVP there. No. Not if I can help it. <laughs> it used to be. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Once upon a time. So Mark and Mark and uh, Randy are joining us to talk about the latest news this week in this part, part one, and then in part two, which will be out next week, uh, they'll be sharing their wisdom on Teams devices and especially how at Commsverse you can find out all about them. So big conference. Uh, I know Al and I are uh, going to be there and uh, that was a conversation we need to have at the beginning, Gary. I forgot about that. Um <laughs> coming up in September uh, over in Weybridge. So we will talk a bit, little bit more about Commsverse uh, as we go through, as I'm sure it'll come up quite a lot. I am very excited about it. I think it's One thing, though, you, you didn't tell me that this podcast was like a week long. <laughs> <laughs> it does sometimes feel like that, I, I have to say. And, uh, yeah, it does occasionally uh, go in a little bit later. But, yeah, we, we like to get that. If you only want to remember the first series of Big Brother where they recorded all the time and did nothing, that's what we like from Grey Hat Beard, basically. <laughs> it works that way. You mean you're going to start editing birds, tweeting randomly? <laughs> yeah. I remember that happening. Anyway. <laughs> More people and the kids walking behind with signs with what's happening, if I remember from the, uh, the first series. But no, we'll, we'll we'll talk a bit more about comms first. I'm sure it'll come up as we go through, but uh, do check it out in the show notes. Uh, what's it? Online.comsverse.com uh, and do get signed up there. If you are listening and you're not in the UK and you're still trying to work out uh, whether you can get over to UK, first off, yes, for many countries you can. So do come and visit face to face. But uh, there is also a virtual option for comms first as well. So you get to uh, play along at home if you if you can't get away at all. But let's get on to the news now. Not and I'm never great with the serious news. I know we had a serious topic uh, on news, but it was really sad. Just after we did our last recording, there was really sad news about someone called Abel Wang uh, who passed away. Um, he was a fantastic guy. He was a developer. So if you've come to Tizen Power Platform, you may not have heard him. If you watch the uh, Build keynote, which was fantastic with uh, Scott Hanselman, um, he was one of the guys there who didn't look great because he was going through a lot of chemotherapy at the time. Uh, we found out recently he's passed away. Uh, and so I just wanted to put a big note and I, I kind of followed him for a while. I've seen him speak on kind of online things, never met him face to face, but 
you can just tell sometimes when someone passes away, the the way he's touched people's lives has been fantastic, whether it's through coding or just generally being a rock star. Um, so if if you're one of those people who've uh, been affected by him and uh, I, I'm going to try and keep it this tone because I know some people listen to their kids, but F cancer uh, is a horrible, nasty thing that affects so many people. Um, he d- one of his colleagues, Isaac Levin, put a thing saying uh, anyone who wants to donate in his memory, there's a charity called Girls Who Code that he was heavily involved with. So I'm going to put a link in the show notes uh, about that. So if you feel like contributing to that, please do, because he was a great guy. Right, we'll move on to, well, I was going to say move on to more positive news, um, which I think it is because uh, sadly talking about death again, but this time Skype for Business uh, has died. And finally, we have gone past the date for that. So if you haven't moved off Skype for Business online, uh, I'm not quite sure what you're doing. I, I'm pretty sure it's just been turned off. Uh, I, I have to say it's one of those things that Microsoft gets to the end dates of things and there's so much build up towards it. I, I don't know, Randy, Mark, if you've been involved in a lot of these but it seems to have gone fairly quietly i thought i haven't heard like much a, noise about like it like the millennium book isn't it they've, yeah yeah exactly well, they've had they've had they've, they originally announced this two years ago can you believe it so the story is you know about six weeks before ignite that year um satya nadella kind of came up with this plan for his team to to try and fix um Sky for business online and uh, you know some of the issues that were you know, being experienced in the in the community and all their customers, and the team came up with a plan. They said, "Unlimited budget, you can do what you want. You know, just fix it, make it work. We want to do stuff with this platform." Teams was already kind of launched. Uh, it was about eighteen months old, something like that. And then, then he kind of changed it, flipped flipped the narrative, and said, "Right, if I gave you unlimited budget, could you make Teams do what Skype does, but do it better?" And they went, "Oh yeah." Kind of got going, and, so, so that's uh, interesting. and that was it. So they were trying that they didn't, they weren't going to get rid of Skype for Business initially. No, that they, they talked they, about keeping it going for a while. So the yeah. the code the code name for for Teams was it Teams Skype for Skype teams. Skype teams? That's it. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. actually got a, a picture of a whiteboard from Bellevue where they were drawing it out. You can't show that publicly, but as far as I suppose it's no longer NDA now. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but, they, but they announced it. Ignite. No, we that don't be, get a lot of going. listeners, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they announced it ignite that year that it'd be going in two years. Well, actually, it was supposed to be in like six months' time, and mm. you know that all this feature parity stuff we all joke about, you know, trying to get parity and in, in Teams yeah. and whatever. And four years later, it's I guess it's there. Probably uh, surpassed it quite a lot, but. Yeah, then they delayed it. And, you know, the only reason to delay something that big would be, you know, one or more big customers whinging about it, really, complaining that something they use every day is going to go and get turned off. So they oh. delayed it. I think it's three or four times now. Yeah, I think it's twice, wasn't it? I think it's, yeah. And, but it's not quite dead yet. You can apply for an extension to take you to October. You can apply for another extension after that if you want to. So, but after two extensions, you've had your extensions. So, get onto Teams. Um, really but it's only Skype online anymore. that's yeah. that's going on. So, if you hate Teams that much, you've always got Skype for Business Server, or or Slack or Zoom. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, yeah. it, it did make me laugh because I know a lot of people didn't want to move off Skype for Business because they like the kind of one-to-one chat and the simple chat windows. And now they shut down Skype for Business online. And just before that, announced Windows 11 and the new thin uh, Teams one, which is basically the same as Skype for Business. So <laughs> it seemed to be a very odd move. Yeah, so the, the the Teams little light app on Windows 11, I think that's going to be pitched towards sort of Teams consumer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't see it coming towards Teams for Enterprise or Teams for Business, whatever it's going to be recategorized categorized as. Um, I think Teams for consumer is more of a threat to skype consumer yeah Um, Yeah. and i guess that's going to be the gradual transition the fact that skype isn't installed by default on 11 but this new teams chat is sort of we have to remember is that all the uc workloads in teams have born out of skype consumer code anyway that's where it came from so we're using pretty much a lot of um under the bonnet stuff from the skype consumer world because the skype for business online comes from the server world it was never built for cloud so that's 
they had a capacity issue, a scalability issue with Skype Online. That meant if they were going to make it as good as Teams, they'd have to re- rebuild it from ground up anyway. Mm-hmm. So might as well just put all the effort into Teams. That's an interesting look, because obviously with the pandemic, we, uh, and I know we'll talk about the latest uh, Teams numbers uh, a little bit later on, but obviously the, the kind of scale up of Teams has been pretty huge. I mean, did Skype for Business Online stop working or are there just not enough people using well, it to make Skype for Business, if you look at how Teams is built under the bonnet, it's all microservices here that are never containerized. All that type, yeah. um, code it's everywhere. Scale. That's, that's yeah. brought, brought together. Um, Skype for Business Online. If you looked under the bonnet, it was basically physical servers, which was running the same, co- almost the same code base as what you'd deploy on prem. And anybody who's deployed Skype for Business Enterprise mm. Edition <laughs> on prem knows it's a 12, 16, 32, 64 node deployment, depending on how big your your deployment's going to be. So you know, every time they had to expand. They've had to buy physical servers, and they just probably don't have enough space in the data centers or the ocean to to run it. So, <laughs> uh, so it was never built for scale. It's funny. You think if uh, the pandemic had happened two years earlier, how, how different broken. life would have been? Yeah, Skype would have mm. died long back. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Slack the, would have won out. One of the fascinating things as well is that you think about that Teams has gone through probably the most rapid onboarding process and consuming process ever recorded in the history of IT. Mm. It's not gone down once. That of its own fault. We can blame Azure AD because that went down a couple of times. Yeah, but true. That was yeah. a little bit, yeah. On its own fault, DNS. it's never gone down. Yeah. And DNS, yeah. <laughs> and, and certificates. certificates okay. yeah. <laughs> but it's never never been that's a, a real cause point, where, it's, where it's been teams that's actually gone down. Few flaky moments where calls have dropped out, but not the whole thing. Oh, you get that everywhere, though, don't you? So, yeah. it's, it's, voice isn't important these days. <laughs> you might um, want to edit that bit out. Yeah, obviously, if any sponsors are listening for Commsverse, Mark is joking there, obviously. Uh, cool. Um, so, and there was some also some news came out uh, around what's new in Teams, and I thought there was some uh, nice nice little tidbits here. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, the uh, nostalgic backgrounds, uh, as they've been calling them. So those who love Clippy can have Clippy as your background uh, on there. Although we were talking about uh, Randy's Matrix Dojo behind, which I think is a much better choice. Well, that's in, that's in my tr- kind of nostalgia. Interesting thing about Clippy, I was actually looking to a... Um, metal fabricator to make clippy toilet roll holders for the comms Ooh, <laughs> Oh, I like that. Well, Looking it was just, as in that that's going to be next year instead then, is it? I think so, because it's um, it was quite expensive to get it done at scale. But yeah, if you imagine where his, where his mouth is pointing over to the right, at right angle, <laughs> that'd be where you hook your, uh, your loo roll on. <laughs> Two eyes and screw holes and the, there I you go, you can have like clippy in your toilet. Idea. I do like that idea a lot. Although I'm now thinking, are we allowed to talk about your idea that we were chatting with on Twitter for a, a future comms verse, or are you keeping that under wraps for now? Uh, I haven't copied. I'll keep that under yet. wraps for now. <laughs> I'll keep it under wraps, but a, a Twitter clip, um, a clippy one for that would be very entertaining. Anyway, I'll move on before I give anything away. Um, this is why I'm so nervous about becoming an MVP um, <laughs> at doing these things. Uh, so a few nice bits of news coming out. Uh, one um, at, at comms first, and I promise I won't keep saying this too much. I hope I'm not annoying no, no, please, listeners, please, please but it will be amazing. Yep. <laughs> um, Every other word is, <laughs> is that you can now find a meeting recording based on what was said with Microsoft Search. So obviously there's transcriptions now uh, in many meetings within Teams. Uh, not all of them slightly frustratingly, um, but it means that you can now search uh, within Microsoft Search, which isn't in Teams yet, frustratingly, but certainly within Bing.com or using the Office.com, if you search, you can go and find your meetings transcripts, which uh, I think is really useful. And I, I'm hoping this means that transcription is going to be more ubiquitous. I, I think what I found is if you set up a meeting within Outlook, Yep, you can turn on transcriptions if you've got a meeting like we've got now that is set up within Teams. There aren't any transcriptions. You can turn on live captions, but not transcriptions, which is uh, slightly annoying. But uh, I think it'd be good. And hopefully this is an indication that maybe Microsoft Search will finally be coming to Microsoft Teams, which feels like it's been almost a year 
waiting for that but uh, i think that will be a good good one to come through so hopefully that will that will start coming through although i notice on this it says you can access this feature through the search bar in teams um which suggests it is slightly starting to use microsoft search already mm. but I guess it is behind the scenes, but not certainly not seeing the same experience as you would yeah. within some of the I think other. This is all part of the move sports. going from Stream to OneDrive and SharePoint and that kind of thing, and trying yeah. to port all the stuff from Stream and you know the technology you get there. Yeah, yeah, a g- good move. I like that. Um, I think we've got locker meeting from additional joins, so uh, you can stop people hijacking. So if Al suddenly decided he wants to come and join us, we could lock him out. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. What did I miss? Oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, it, it, intriguing one that but I, I quite like the idea that I'm sure I wouldn't try and use it all the time but having that you know especially when people drop in and drop out making sure that you can stop people interrupting the meeting especially you know like if you're doing a podcast recording and you want to make sure that people don't accidentally join halfway through I think uh, quite a nice little feature and, and I, I like this article because there's quite a few kind of small updates like that that can make a really big difference to some people I think uh, the Mike, um... I think Sorry, the invite only participants is probably a stronger feature because mm-hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't mind people joining late if they're overrunning the previous they can join muted mm. yeah uh, um force mute everybody when you're presenting and uh, let them join but i can see the kind of a use case for it but the the invited only people that's going to be a big one because it stops teams bombing zoom bombing or whatever yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? It's never, never teams bombing. I wonder why that was. Um, <laughs> yeah, try and like guess the URL. There. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. Certainly, some of the copied URLs from Teams. You're never going to guess those. Um, another nice one: Teams meetings auto recording. So, and I know uh, Gary. I, th- I think when you were at CPS, uh, you heralded the idea of having a little record icon in yeah. some of the slides to remind you. Um, second slide in always put the record button at the side and that was always the trigger of yep need to record um before really you get one. into it yeah <laughs> but we, now we did, hit, we did hit one the other day where we had to stop the recording because the client wanted to discuss something they didn't want recorded then we forgot to turn it back on again so that that was slightly annoying so we still challenges there but uh not you failed at the one. first first it hurdle there didn't you <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah yeah exactly uh, we've got some paging on video galleries, which I thought was quite nice. One I, I really like, and uh, I can see all of us using our virtual backgrounds, but now you can tailor and have organisational wide backgrounds. So we, we've we had a repository uh, at CPS for ones that we tend to use on there, but it's kind of reliant on people remembering to go and grab them. Now you can kind of push those out to people, which I thought was uh, quite nice. I, I haven't seen whether you can remove some of the existing ones, which would be quite nice, and because much as I do love your beach scene, Mark, it, it always winds me up because I haven't been to a nice hot sunny beach in a long, long time. So, uh, well, that's okay. I mean, your half of your head's missing, so we... <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, no, my hair really looks like that. But uh... <laughs> uh, the one thing on this is um, slightly strange is that it requires an extra license. Yeah. And and I'm sure that um, you know our guests will be able to tell us all about the advanced communications license. Um, I I've, I've heard of it in nu- numerous times, but I don't actually know what additions it gives you. Is it something that's quite accessible for organisations, or is it pretty? Well, do you want brand, branded meeting lobby? Oh, okay. Um, okay. It's I don't know. So it's not a cheap thing by the sound it's, of things. It's, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not been a. Yeah, it's been a really contentious license. You know, yeah, it's not. When they announced it. It was. It's not one many friends. Guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> where I've heard it from. Yeah, I must admit. It, it was going to enable APIs. <laughs> it was going to enable call recording from third parties that you've already paid for. Um, there was all kinds of stuff that it was going to enable, and really, you know, when you have to think about, you know, something like a you know, call recording if you need call recording for a thousand users paying another nine pound per user per month for a thousand users on top of whatever your recording services from the from your third party you know those kind of things can get quite expensive on top of your e5 you're talking on top of your e5 e5 and everything which is supposed to be the top whack license but then yes yeah, so i think microsoft is still kind of settling on what the acl will actually include um i i see it as more kind of you know marketing led um, that kind of thing, as just as Mark said, the branded lobby, 
So mm-hmm. having your logo on the lobby and the join experience, you know, I guess that's a nice thing if you really care about your identity and your brand and all that kind of stuff. The advanced communicate the the, the uh, sorry org wide background. You guys have got you know nice you know caricature stuff for the podcast, and you've probably got some nice CPS corporate ones. We've got some Simity corporate ones, etc. Um, and and yeah, having those pushed out, you know, would be nice. But when you have but to pay that for mean, that additional license, so does that mean you need to pay for each person that's going to be pushed out to every well, organization? Yeah, mm. I'd heard it was the meeting organizer. Right. Okay. So, but everyone could be a meeting organizer, can't they? So, I don't know yeah. the the history of ACL. It started in bad taste because ninety five percent of the license were features that you already had access to one way or another. And then when there was a big revolt with the compliance recording people because they're saying, well, you know, you're driving us down to the bottom. Our margins are slim, and you're making it a nine pound a month entry to even use our services. It's not fair. So they walked back on those ideas um, and the APIs as well. Uh, it leaves the license very light for the money, in my opinion, right now. So I think they need to look at their roadmap, be, figure out what are the most important features and bundle yeah. it together to make it more compelling. To be fair, if you're spending 10 quid a month on scheduling meetings, you know, nine quid a month's nothing, really. Well, no, but you <laughs> times it by 1,000, 10,000 users. 20,000 yeah. users, it seems ramps up, doesn't it, on top of whatever you, you're doing. Um, yeah. I'm not a fan of bolt-on licenses, to be honest. I'd rather see it, I'd rather see the E3s or E5s increase by a couple of quid a month, you know, to cover the cost of development of new features rather than trying to, you know, complicate the licensing piece by or, trying to figure out, you, you know, who's going to be an organizer. I can't. So you get E5 where you get everything rolled up or you can buy the bolt-on so you can pick and choose, but it seems to be the worst of both where you've got to pay a lot of money then pay a load more as well um, yeah that's, i think it does um, feel tricky it's interesting because i wonder how i wonder what the price point is before people say it, enough's enough it's too expensive i think we may be finding out for not too long to be honest uh, <laughs> gary think... gary could take this back go fix it gary you yeah. <laughs> i'll try <laughs> um Moving on before we, we get all our MVPs taken away. Um, so, yeah, some nice... It's all right. They like honest feedback. It's fine. Yeah, they, they do. No, and and I, I, I think that's a very good point, actually, for those wondering. Uh, yes, it's good to... As long as you're honest and give detailed feedback, no one really minds. Talking of which, the real-time telemetry for meetings, I was playing with this. I was some good chat with Ian Smith um, at CPS uh, and, and looking at the video quality because we're realizing that the quality on Macs uh, for videos is lower than on PCs, which we're a little bit upset by. Um, but part of it was looking at the core health and being able to see the, the kind of stats from the video. And uh, it, it's some quite interesting things you can look at uh, on there. So I quite, quite enjoy playing around with that. Um, so worth worth a look at. Uh, related get, content get for Teams meetings. Get a camera for, for Teams and don't use your FaceTime camera. You'd be fine. <laughs> I do have one, but uh, yeah, it was was limited to uh, 480p um, on this one, which I was a little bit upset by. Um, it's only realised that that extra 4K camera I spent really was a waste of money. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, enough on You know that you can't money. get 1080p on, on Microsoft Teams unless your network is like 100%. Yeah, I can't even get 1080p on, uh, <laughs> on a Mac. <laughs> so it's what we, we quickly found out. Uh, some of the news, so more on the collaboration side, related content for Teams meetings for mobiles. So you can turn up to your meeting and uh, the AI can recommend what documents you probably should have read but haven't. So I uh, really like that because that's come from Outlook, um, uh, Outlook Web. Now Outlook Web does that. It will search and give you all your related content. So I, I quite like that as a little feature. It's nice uh, coming across uh, over to mobile, which hopefully means it will come to the iPad as well. Which would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a nice feature. I haven't seen it be that accurate so far. Uh, I've seen it recommend a lot of the wrong things would be my only grumble with it. But uh, I, I do think the AI and it's it's only going to improve as people start using it and click on things. So it's uh, mm-hmm. certainly not going to complain about it. Uh, hard audio mute, which is uh, always useful. I know, Mark, you were talking a little bit about that. Um, support for human interface devices on Windows virtual desktops. Uh, not sure what a human interface device is. Is that just a mouse and a keyboard or? 
It's a oh, headset controls. Yeah, it's the mute and answer and you know that kind of stuff on your headset. Ah, right. Okay. So it's all the buttons there coming through to Windows Virtual Desktop, and I imagine that probably means also Windows 365, mm. which is where I suspect that uh, what is driving that one. Uh, RDS is sexy again. We just call it Windows Virtual Desktop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's never sexy, really, isn't? Um, <laughs> few other smaller bits i'm going to jog through uh obviously some microsoft teams room up updates uh including teams only mode which is almost uh, i love this the it own, means can now know. configure their teams room to not require signing in skype for business that's quite lucky because that, that could have been a problem otherwise yeah. Yeah. so uh yeah good good to hear that one um, which may be related to the other one of detection of widespread outages affecting multiple rooms. Well, obviously, if you're still trying to dial in Skype for Business Online, then probably having those two things together could be uh, helpful on there. Uh, do, do jump in, Mark or Randy, if I'm uh, downplaying some of these very exciting things that, to me, I mean, look no, like fairly small The one ones. there, the managed, yeah, the, basically that's the Microsoft Teams Room Portal, or MTRP for short. It's the premium license for Teams Rooms. Uh, it's a it's a great service. You can actually you know, monitor and manage all of your room estate in a in a portal uh, held by Microsoft. Yes, and then Microsoft right. also have some warm bodies behind the scenes actually using some AI to actually do predictions, look at the overall health, um, detect you know anomalies, and actually proactively go and fix them. So they do things like it says here, you know, detect, detection of widespread outages. That is you know after a patch Tuesday kind of thing where you get a bunch of rooms that maybe blue screen when they when they start up or something like that. It could be firmware health. Or if the cleaner goes around every week at the same yeah. time, unplugs, that, that, puts a vacuum in. That, that kind of thing. And then, you know, firmware updates and um, OS updates, all that kind of stuff is coming to it. So these people behind the scenes for, it's a £37.50 in the UK, $50 license. You know, you get your room equipment actually looked after by some by some real people. Uh, yeah, really, really good. Do, do you know many clients who've used that, or have you yeah, been I mean, involved in any yeah, of those? We, yeah, at Simency, we're a, 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 an elite partner, so effectively we can um, work on customers' behalf and actually manage their room estate in conjunction mm -hmm. with Microsoft. So Good we're, enough. you know, meets room partner program and and elite. So again, we can we can you know effectively do the whole thing. So we've got a, a number of customers that are using MTRP um, either on their own or through us. Isn't MTRP run by the back end people, Kinley and UC.com? Nope. It's, uh, it is a third party, but it's a third party. It's like, um, I guess, Wipro, when Wipro was doing support back in the, back in the older days. Um, trying to remember the name of the company that's doing it now um but yeah effectively it is a third party but they're effectively microsofties by by another name look for the v address yeah 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 they're all v dash um, nice intriguing no i have to admit i heard about that and i worked in financial services previously and kind of got announced uh, around the time i left there and uh, i was like that is exactly what they want it's just someone who can help look after that because it just takes up a lot of time because someone's pressed the wrong button and things like that. So making mm. it more effective for people. Perfect. Um, got a nice new shiny Dell Oddshop webcam, which uh, if you plug into your Mac won't help. Um, some nice new uh, other kit and things on these. Well, I'm going to move on from these, but because I think we'll talk about Teams devices a little bit more in, in part two. So do listen out for that. Um, got some nice new expanded emoji pickers because we all need more emojis in our lives. Uh, nice one. I thought the immersive reader support for mobile um, was another. I, I think we've talked about the immersive reader on Grey Hat Beard before. Um, really great way of getting into that content. So uh, I liked that. Um, there was one more article which I'm just trying to find. Yeah, a bit of a dev one this that I really liked. I've been trying to build a uh, meeting app recently. And um, one of the issues I had was you can only have it in the side panel. But what this has got is the capability, this is about Power Platform, but to have your app as the main stage. So, for example, for those looking at video, we're obviously sharing a um, 
PowerPoint presentation at the moment, but I could create that as an app which could show the presentation and flip around and show other things as, as well as the presentation. We've been talking about doing it for the happy hour etiquette where we, we kind of talk and want people to vote. That could be the main stage and sh instead of having the photos with the sidebar. So um, I, I think quite a small update, but a really useful one. So um, look, looking forward to playing around with this. And it kind of talks about power this being under power platform but i assume this is power apps and custom dev as well that you can do this yeah this was uh, demoed at ignite if i remember it was it was kind of announced this main stage kind of extension um area um which opens up tons of new possibilities i think this is the new whiteboard stuff that's come in as well um where you can yeah. have everyone okay. kind of on the same rather than just sharing that, that one whiteboard it's more of a like a shared shared experience shared experience yeah yeah so um, building out things with fluid and other things and uh, you know i know mm -hmm. hybrids very much the buzzword at the moment but I, I think it is that that way of having people working on their own devices having it up on a main screen wherever you are yeah. um hopefully we'll see some more things so if you've got some good ideas now is a good time to get them out there um a couple of teams multi-geo support so I, I think for those working multi-geo uh, that was a Another announcement that's come through. I thought that'd been announced already. Maybe this is just the GA of it and they're just bundling a few more things before they went away on holiday. But uh, do do have a look. A few other updates in there worth having a look through as well. Uh, it's a bit far along on that than I thought it was going to, but uh, brought me neatly on to one of the ones we covered, which was the usage of Teams. Uh, so with the pandemic, we've seen that grow and grow and grow. And I, th I think, Gary, we talked about this on grey hat beard we'll, we'll see this kind of tailing off at some point and leveling out but nope um, mm. teams has carried gone up from 145 million to 250 million active users so that that growth just seems like it's going faster and faster not not really slowing down that much uh, it's quite impressive yeah i think i remember us having that conversation of wow we've we've seen the you know it proper skyrocket and probably it starts to slow down um but obviously it hasn't I think this, again, maybe part of the conversation we were having about Skype for Business as well, the more people moving across. Um, it's interesting that you know, it says Teams collaboration platform. Well, it, yes, from, from one side, but there's obviously a lot of UC element to that as well, driving those uh, uh, those user stats as well. I think you know that's the thing with Teams, isn't it? You can almost see it as two two beasts you've got the uc side and you've got the collaboration side uh, i think it's a bit downplaying that it's just collaboration that's uh, that's driving uh, all of this this usage but um yeah it's exciting i guess you know there's a lot of people I, on there so i have to say though i'm just reading this and it, it's all saying teams has hit the 250 million monthly active users up from 145 million daily active users yeah i don't know how that translates so yeah. i assume that means 250 million distinct users during that month versus 145 million during that day uh, suddenly that number doesn't sound quite as good as uh, yeah it seems like such a big jump think. but maybe not yeah mm. that that is quite an interesting one yeah, I think we need to add that they're used to these big big yeah. growth i mean you look at the, it was 145 and then the, the 12 months before that it was have that yeah you know, and obviously yeah. that was fueled by the pandemic and everybody getting sent home and having to figure out how to plug in their phone that they stole from the office and oh suddenly i can't do that <laughs> and uh yeah, yeah. so yeah the, they're used to this massive growth and you know when when did the 145 thing get announced was april yeah so yeah yeah, yeah it's not much later so it's like three months they're not going to get another months. hundred thousand or 100 yeah. million users mm -hmm. are they necessarily that that is intriguing this is like when they have chocolate bars and they say same old price but actually they've half the size of it and things yeah, like that the so, shrinkflation uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit cheated on that one now, but uh, well, maybe it's a typo. Who knows? But it could be in the calculation as well. No, I think uh, it says there the new metric Microsoft now is using is monthly, not daily active yeah. users. So uh, no, it go. does definitely appear to be an intentional thing. Yeah. Cheeky, that's what I say. Well, you know, if it's accurate, fair play. It all depends on how how it's calculated. I guess we won't know. Is yes. it resource accounts? Is it your bot farm in China, Kevin? That's working really well. <laughs> yeah. Not meant to talk about that. <laughs> Stop mining Bitcoin and start mining 
Yeah. Team Jesus, yeah, Bitcoin and Team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how it's working. Um, to, uh, going on to quickly before someone finds out about my bot farm. Um, CPS will realise what I'm using my credits on. Um, there was an interesting tweet I saw. Um, we kind of talk about the future of what's going to happen with teams. And I know Mark at Commsverse, uh, you, you had a lovely, um, oh, I've suddenly forgotten the name of it, the virtual uh, event that you could go and walk through. All which space. was fantastic. All space, thank you. Um, that you could go and walk through and chat. And I, I love that because you can kind of wander up, same as you do at ones, have a listen in to some of the conversations happen at the vendor booth and then move on to the next one and stuff. So that was great. Uh, but, it's kind of interesting because we, we pushed up. One, I think we were the first co- conference to give VR a go, and we said to the Microsoft Teams group, product group, so you should really take a look at this like garage project that you've got because you can see this using being used in Teams. You should really like take a look. Hey, hey Microsoft Mesh. Exactly. I, I take full Ahead credit for it. You know, <laughs> I take full credit for that. I'm still waiting for my check, but. You know. <laughs> I'd say I, I thought it was brilliant. Really, really enjoyed sort of popping into that. And uh, I, th- I think too many people were scared off thinking they didn't have a VR device. But uh, if you yeah, don't have yeah. a VR device, uh, MimeSys have a solution, which is uh, holograms. So uh, I, I haven't dug too much more into this, I will be honest. But uh, you just, just need four me. projectors, one of each, yeah. one of your table instead. So for, the, for those who can't see uh, who watch on there, uh, if you look in the show notes, basically it's a hologram and there is someone uh, standing in front of a camera um, doing rather strange squats. I'm not entirely sure why, but then there's a hologram of the desk and there's there's no headset that someone's wearing. Uh, this isn't just an augmented reality as far as I can tell. It seems to be projecting onto the desk um, a, a kind of representation. It, the only way I can really think of describing it is Yoda. Um, it is, and, it and, is tab- tabletop uh, yoga. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not not yoga, yo, not Yoda. Um, Princess yeah. Leia, and the the Star Wars representation. It just needs yeah, the lines right. and the slight flickering, and it's it's spot on. <laughs> Although slightly terrifying face, but uh, this this could be the future. We could sit around and see people doing yoga on a desk during a meeting. It's uh, what we all want. The, the, these kind of things it's the you know it's the starting point right it's the where's this going to be in another year's time two years time which is the it, it's it's you know i think with the the other uh kind of um with the inspire uh session that we saw the with the with the you know the hollow ends and the meeting and, and all that kind of stuff is that we're kind of looking at it now thinking Okay, you know, it, it's maybe it looks a little bit strange, but actually, it's it's really early days for this technology, um, as well. Same with you know mixed reality; it's still pretty mm. early. Um, you know, again, give it five years, things start to get cheaper, become more accessible. It's going to become, I think, a bit more part of our, uh, I guess, daily lives. I think I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be, be less just ooh, look at this cool video. Um, it'll be definitely more accessible but i can i can see the point of it which kind of brings me on to the next story which i think oh no that's not the link i was looking for there we go uh i've recently bought a new uh webcam and this webcam one, one of the things that's always bugged me is generally the webcam sits at the top of the screen and i know randy you talked about having the, the kind of people bar along the top so at least you're looking near them but it's always bugged me that you don't really look people in the eyes uh, and i know others have talked about putting google out uh, googly eyes on the webcam but unfortunately then you're looking at the webcam then looking at their face and doing that um so i bought this new uh webcam it's been a kickstarter project and it's not the best quality uh, i'm be honest i'm not using it at the moment because it doesn't come through quite as nicely um but gives you a, a fairly small webcam that sits in the middle of your monitor and it's relatively thin doesn't block too much but means you can look people uh, in the eye and so i kind of position my teams over it especially on a one-to-one so you can actually look people in the eye and Rand, i like Rand, it, Rand, Rand, do, you, do, you, do you want to tell him or, or shall i tell him like he's but, just wasted his money how much did you put into this <laughs> uh, not very much if i'm honest so, yeah, that's okay. very cheap. <laughs> yeah. so I, so samsung have a laptop where they've done a, a, a sensor behind the screen so you have a, a webcam that's actually behind the screen you can't see it but it will really? it's right in the middle but um it's only one model yeah um, 
it's very early days. Mention this when I, when I posted that on Twitter that there were some with it behind the yeah. side. And to be honest, the main reason I invested is because if it kick, kick starts, if you pardon the pun, other people <laughs> creating things like this, because I, I think it's yeah. the, the big issue. You mo- lose that kind of interaction with people because everyone's kind of looking down. And you're like, oh, what are they looking at? Oh, and actually, it, they are looking at your face. You just don't realise it. The the ultimate fix is go to the office. <laughs> <laughs> Where you can. Sorry, I didn't realise Rishi Sunak could uh, join this call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, that is true. Uh, although I did have the other comment saying, yeah, a load of IT people with this because they're always renowned for looking people straight in the eye, honest, um, which which I thought was a fair point as well. It was actually quite interesting because you know, when we went to record that, that studio at Birmingham, around the, I, I always struggle trying to pretend a camera or a webcam is somebody mm. and but when it's an actual proper camera on a tripod mm. it was completely different well because so there was a camera it's... camera operator behind the the whole thing I guess so. had the... she needs to get a cardboard cut out of randy when yeah. the, the side of my desk he was, I guess. He was there not another know, one you know, <laughs> and action and, you know the only thing he was missing was the clacker you know yeah. um so talk, talking off back to the office, that does bring on to the next article. You're getting good at this, Mark. Um, a really nice tweet thread, which I'm not going to go through completely. I'll put in the show notes. But a guy called Chris Hurd, who's talking to a lot of companies about the return to the office and just his experience of what he's seeing. Things like leases are expiring and not being renewed. So people are starting to let space go on there. Um, and lots of people are quitting. And I think there's more and more people saying that if they have to go back to the office full time, they won't. And I'm hearing that anecdotally, um, definitely from others. I mean, uh, I think the four of us are primarily at home and uh, used to that life. And the thought the thought if I had to commute into the office every day would certainly make me look for other jobs. Yeah, I kind of I take these sort of influencer threads as a bit of a pinch of salt because some of it is exactly it. it's influencing. So I question the truth behind it. I can't see people giving up their livelihoods just because they told they have to go back to the office. But I think you know, the office is the office is more safe opportunities though, is it? now. Though. So there are more opportunities to work from home. But equally, yeah. just because your bosses, or the companies come back and said, "Look, we'd like you to work two or three days in the office, and the rest at home," not regimented, but come to the office for a reason. There's there's value in that. There's still value in human interaction. Yeah, like. I've been working from home now for the best part of two and a half years, and I miss going to site to the office just because the change of scenery and meeting people, going, grabbing a coffee down Costa, walking on your lunch to Tesco, whoever it may be, just people different, you know, and you speak to people differently in person than you do over the Teams meeting or what have you. And you need that break away from your house because your house being you your workplace and the place of living and your place of being a you know mother father um boyfriend girlfriend etc you know it's, it's different you, you need that separation sometimes so i, I don't I, see i don't see i don't think it will go completely home. no no i agree um what, what we're seeing is a lot of businesses are actually transforming the offices into more of a i think mark used the term you know having a an excuse to go there you know sort of a meeting space so they're, yeah. they're they're taking rather than a meeting room with four walls and all that kind of stuff, they're actually just transforming where there used to be a bank of you know fifty desks, and putting in you know conducive furniture to have little the huddle space kind of yeah. rooms, things, these pods, these sofas with the high backs and acoustic fabric and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they're they're making them you know more conducive to actually meet with people and ideate and actually get stuff done together. And actually have that excuse to go there and then obviously the and, hybrid you know and i think that's where it works is that you can go to the office and do that work together come home and get stuff done because you can sort of isolate you can turn on focus time you can move away from things and and get stuff done from home versus working with other people at those times and you can move together i think the other comment that chris made which i think is very interesting because certainly if i think hybrid i think it's that choice about where you can work on there uh and i think it's right and i think companies don't see that companies see it as them telling you when you can work in the office and when you can't because mm. you can't have that flexibility because everyone's going to want to go in for the thursday go for the thursday beers not have to travel in on the friday not have to travel in monday 
And if everyone has those same patterns, things aren't going to work. So the reality is they're going to have to put some enforcement with that as well. So it'd be, it's going to be some contention, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some jobs can't be done remotely either. So mm. yes. Yeah. I think this is kind of, you know, as the whole, obviously some companies have gone through quite a bit of a transformation of people weren't working from home before and it wasn't necessarily part of the the culture and then obviously everyone went remote and then it's now become a norm and actually okay yeah we can do this kind of remote working thing I think it's the now just applying the sweeping brush of right everyone back in the office now I think a lot of people are taking that and going well yeah but actually I, I've benefited and you've benefited of an organization with me being at home and you know everyone's got different situations like like what you said some people are on some people are on their own they're quite happy to come into the office every day of the week some people have got used to having a bit more time with the family and not having to deal with a commute and no that's the other end yeah that's it that, yeah it's it's a real factor that I think and this is where it's going to be interesting with companies who are going to take these kind of hybrid working approaches is that's the balance that really needs to be struck is that there is no one size fits all right even even by industry I think I think it's very it's very much on 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 an individual basis Mm -hmm. I think the companies that do approach it like that are the ones that will you know effectively hold on to people I think if if companies are just taking a, a sweeping approach i think you know that we've had the articles i think um the microsoft uh, work lab article that we uh, i think referred to a few weeks ago about mm-hmm. you know 40 percent of the workforce is actually changing uh, this year like globally it's, it's a lot of people and this is just i think fueling that and, well. and when you say change you mean sort of changing jobs the attrition yeah 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 Yeah, the 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 worldwide churn if you like Mm. that's that's happening now and i think you know this has had a big factor in it um i think uh, i think it's it's made people reprioritize um and and look for things that they maybe didn't before yeah i mean not being political about it but obviously the government and and also shopkeepers and retail spaces and that kind of thing (laughs) do want people to go back to city centers and back into offices yeah. So they can buy their expensive coffees and their so, Tesco sandwiches and whatever. You need to listen to that Pret a director when he tells you you need to go back into the office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they can buy some more meeting rooms, actually. <laughs> That's, yeah, I, I think churn will be the uh, the buzzword for the next year. Um, mm. Whether it's hybrid or not, there's going to be a lot of change and things aren't are going to take a little while to settle back down. Probably mm. end up settling back down to exactly the same thing as before, but... Uh, Go. Uh, if you do end up back in the workplace uh, and you're using Viva Insights, there is a lovely new tool available called the Workplace Collaboration Optimizer. That if you have your um, Viva Insights used, it can work out who works together and there, therefore help automatically plan where people should sit based on who works together. So not just the hierarchical teams, but who's actually talking, who's engaging a lot on there. So, um, it, so yeah, if I, if uh, I add you to my block list, to see how this works. If I add you Sorry, to my Mark. block list, will it automatically put you in like a different section section to me? That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Track and trace. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we could feed that into it, but I, I'm intrigued by this idea. I just I would love to see how it scales. I remember trying to do some analysis at a previous company at, at who talked to each other from all the logs and things, and it was just this amorphous blob, uh, and then a few outliers who obviously didn't like talking to anyone. Um, I wonder if this would kind of work it out in a figurative way. And I'd love to know how many organisations have a lovely laid out set of desks uh, like that as well, because I don't think there's too many, but uh, intriguing. We'd, we'd certainly like to give it a go um, on that. But uh, didn't Dell and through... stuff like that do this kind of, you know, augmented search, you know, sort of many years ago, even kind of link days? You know, if you, know, if you search for, if you're in a big company and you've got, I don't know, 50 Garys, but you sent a, an instant message to you, Gary, you know, 15 Two minutes hours. ago, then it would, then it would, then it would say, um, oh, that's probably the Gary you want, not the other 50 and, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I think that this is more about understanding who works to each other and therefore allowing people to position the desks so that you're yeah, with people I, you work with. I, I get with. that. This is the same thing. This was, you know, kind of using some sort of neural whatever to try yeah. and guess who you wanted to speak to based on your your latest interactions but this right, is yeah I see what you mean 
positing yeah. it on on a on a floor plan, which is which is a great thing. But we have we have yeah. this technology, and it's been here since like nineteen, well, the eighteen hundreds, right? You have a office block, you have a floor, you have offices partitioned, and on the door you have finance, admin, HR, and you just go into that office and <laughs> you work in finance, H, admin, and HR, right? Yeah. And then you find out someone's moved it because this number of team have left, and then these, and then someone else needs a desk move because they've decided their team's growing and. I, yeah, I think in two years at, rooms instead. That's, that's say, two, two years at one company. <laughs> two years at one company. I think I had seven different desks, and that that was without hot desking. So uh, wow. I, I like the idea, Mark. I think the reality sadly <laughs> <laughs> doesn't hit like that. It's a standing desk on wheels. Right. Well, I mean, one thing <laughs> I, I learned is grab it, walk to where you want to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm, Kevin's a, a danger to desks, is what I heard from that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I had a beautiful window seat and then it oh, just went far too quickly. I'm going to cover a couple of uh, community articles. So we had uh, Simon Hudson and Simon Doy on uh, a few episodes back talking about maturity model for 365. Uh, they've passed, published a new article, Simon and Mark, uh, around how to run a maturity model uh, for Microsoft 365 workshop. So uh, if you're looking to set up and understand an organization's um, maturity levels they've got some great guidance on how to run that workshop which is uh, very helpful uh in slightly sillier news uh i joined the pmp call the regular calls they have around this and uh paul bullock who's recently joined cps was talking about the samples on there uh and i know how he loves a pun and i jokingly said to him oh you should make a pun sample on there uh give it a weekend later and he has actually created a pnp pn pun samples list uh with lots of great jokes to uh what's on there i tried to tell the migration team a joke earlier unfortunately i just couldn't get them on board uh so if really bad puns are your thing uh go and have a look on there and it's open source so you can even add your own puns uh, obviously making sure that you have credit for it to whoever gave it on there um but yes that will appeal to some people far more than others and looking at faces here it's probably appealing to me far more than anyone else <laughs> i think else it, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of it's kind of appealing appealing to those people who live in the basement or behind the red door in it really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's me thank you um and one final one on the community uh, scottish summit coming up in 2022 and they've put a call out for anyone who wants to help go and volunteer so getting involved uh I don't know if you can remember, Gary. I think it is intended to be face to face, isn't it? It's not a hybrid conference. That I one. believe so. Yes, that, that's my thought. So yeah. uh, getting up to Scotland to get involved in that. So we'll put some links in the show notes um, and there are links in the show notes. Uh, I may have m- mentioned Commsverse a couple of times, uh, September 15th and 16th. Uh, so uh, do check that out on the show notes. And the the other conference that I do have to big up as uh, Aaron works with me and he kicks me otherwise, uh, it's a South Coast Summit just after that in October, which will be down in Southampton. Uh, otherwise, I think we'll wrap up part one uh, on the news. Uh, thank you, Mark and Randy. Really uh, good to have that uh, UC side of things to the news there. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Do stick around for a week's time for part two. I'll still be here. Bye-bye. <laughs>